Actually, you have to be black to understand music, reggae music. The most important thing for a black man now is to become aware of himself. And reggae is that awareness. Like soul, white people like soul, and black people. If you can go along to a party and they're playing soul music all night, and you know that black people and white people enjoy it, naturally it's very good in, in race relations. <laughs> The black music scene is dominated by reggae and soul. In today's programme, we're looking at the differences between them. Some people believe that reggae and soul are simply fashions. But if they are, why do some youngsters choose to follow one rather than the other? The answer is they're not just fashions. Reggae and soul actually represent two different choices on the most basic political decision that every young black has to make, whether to integrate or segregate. Reggae is the black alternative to becoming part of white society. Soul is putting aside your blackness and merging with the mainstream. Get up, stand up. Reggae followers tend to feel that racial integration is very difficult here in Britain. People have to be able to come accept each other. If you can accept me and I can accept you, we can live together. But if you can't accept me and you're always looking down upon me, you're always feeling that you're carrying me, you can't, we, can't, we can't live together, you know? And from once white man feels that, from what white people and people as a general start looking at the black man and seeing that the black man is something because the black man helped this country, the black man helped build this country. They take a whole heap of food from the black man, you know? Once they start realizing that they have to give some of this back and stand and respect each other, everybody as a man, as human beings, they could live together. But if they, do, if they can't do that, I can't see no way they can live together. Shaka is a reggae disc jockey. He also thinks integration is unlikely. I don't really see it because you would always have this lack of communication, you know? They don't understand your way. You've got someone coming from that part of the world which is how many thousands and thousands of miles away and you come and meet up somewhere. You know, you're bound to be different than that man. You, you, can't, you can't be the same. You know, so you're going to have some form of barrier there all the time. There's no getting away from it. You must have a barrier. It's strictly black because you have to be black to understand it. If you, don't under, if you can't, you have to be black to feel it because a black man is who does feel the pressures, right? And the singer, they must sing about the pressure, right? And if you don't black and you don't feel the pressures, how can you understand what reggae is about? You can't understand what reggae is about. But what sort of things relate to black people? Oppression. 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 Just like how you go up on the street and you walk up on the street and a babble and just hold you up for sasa or somewhere like that there. Him go and him, him feel that oppression and him go into the street and him sing about what happened to him. And you, you know it happened to you before. So when, when him sing across that record, is a message to you, is an education to you, and you learn from that record. Reggae singers also see the music in this way. Diamond don't see why I should be here suffering and singing of my suffering, and yet nothing now get done about it. See it? So I might as well go sing to someone who would overstand it. You see, and he try to help I and see I through I tribulation. See, so that's why I sing for. Him. So reggae is a way of expressing the experiences of black people. Shaka goes further. He thinks it provides liberation for an unliberated people. There's a lot of things what makes black people not really free, even in this country all over the world.
but you know just by hearing a certain record or hearing that drum knocking like that bum, 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 you have to move your body it's, it's automatic you know just to be free you know there's no other way as far as they see it but to the music but they don't know no other way to be free except for music in this country But reggae does more than tell black youngsters about their own experiences. It also helps to develop pride and dignity in their blackness by teaching them about their own culture and history. Reggae itself is based on African rhythms. In this way, Shaka thinks it teaches young blacks about their ancestors' African past. You can even play a record where straight away as you hear it, you remember you know, like you was there. You know, you hear some words on a record and it's like you're actually there yourself, you know, or you was there at that time, you know? So one can even look back and say, well, yeah, well, I must have been around before, or, you know? Reggae is to teach you something. Reggae is like an education. When, when you listen, when you sit down and listen, them show you all about prophecy, them show you about great black people who was beforehand, them show you things that happened to black man. Shaka thinks it's important for young blacks to know their origins, because only in that way can they now develop a sense of direction. Well, the culture and knowing where you're coming from and the roots. Black man's memory. You hear that on a record, you know? You've got to even think, and what, where is your memory? You've got to look back where you're coming from. That's what your memory is going to be, is where you're coming from. So if some people don't know where they're coming from, they're not going to know where they're going. You know, so therefore you've got to look back first where you can look forward. But what future do reggae followers see for themselves if they feel they're not accepted here in a mainly white country? Repatriation is a must. It shows sure all the record them shows sure repatriation is a must. Because you're there in here and you have, you have feel pure tribulation, pure frustration, pure persecution, you know? Then where they, how can you live like that? The man can't be happy, and happiness is what everybody has seek. So you, where, do you, where do you feel that you'll be happy? Aren't you happy in this country? I'm happy because I'm here, but I'm not happy spiritually and fully happy. And the only way you can feel fully happy is spiritually. And my spiritual home is Africa, and Africa is where I have to try. And that's where we get, that's, that's where the, all, everybody show you. If, you. if you listen to the record them and show you, say, Africa is where I have to go, because Africa is Zion. Africa is my resting place, because that's where I come from. Reggae, then, is not just music or fashion. It's a lifestyle, a basic political choice. It's about awareness, about blackness, about facing problems head on. The soul scene is completely different. Young blacks from the same generation and the same background aim for something quite the opposite. <laughs> The 
young blacks who follow soul have an entirely different view of the world. For a start, the soul scene is visibly integrated. Black and white youngsters mix freely. I think there's an even mixture between blacks and whites. Um, it's... It's, it's come along in the last three or four years, or well, even more in actual fact. There was a time when I think it was associated mainly with black people. But of late, now all the disco things, there are many white people and black people dancing together. You know, they mix, they mix with everybody. Youngsters who follow soul generally claim to have had no real problems of racism. I've never had no problems in getting on with anybody. You know, I think any anybody can get on with anybody. If, you know, it's up to themselves. You know, yeah, it's up to the individual. Do you mix with a lot of uh, white people? Uh, yes. And you don't have any problems mixing socially? No, none at all. Why not? It's just um, the place I come from. They don't. They're not bothered about racial. Uh, aspects at all. Have you ever experienced any racial conflict personally? Well, no, not me personally, no. Jackie, you obviously get on with uh, white people. Your friend is, is white. Well, I get on with all white people that I know. Have you always got on with, with white people? Yes. Have you ever experienced any discrimination because of your colour? I never had that problem. I don't know why. Do you see race relations in this country improving in the future? I think they will because I think more um, young people are being brought up with coloured and whites mixed, whereas in the last generation, blacks were actually coming into this country now that people have been brought up together. There's been so many things that's held us down. Black soul followers aren't interested in emphasizing their blackness or establishing an alternative black culture. I, I realize I'm black, so I mean, I don't have to, you know, keep on saying to myself or proving to us, you know, to anybody that I'm black. You know, I just put that aside and just, you know, party with everybody else. Do you think the music itself can play any role in, in getting people to? Yeah, yeah. I think the music is uh, you know, togetherness, you know? you know, happiness. You know, I mean, have a good time while you can. You know? you know? I mean, there's no sort of uh, cultural, you know, you know, uh, talk, you know, talk about Africa. Or, you know, talk about politics in, you know, you know, soul is just happiness, you know. You know I mean, being free, being, you know, living easy, you know. But in a sense, isn't that ignoring the problems that, that you're having as a black person? No, no. I know I'm black. I know what I am, you know. So, <laughs> you know, it doesn't, you know, bother me. I'm proud of what I am as well. That's the main thing, you know. Soul followers definitely do want to stay here yeah. in Britain and want to do well and get on. Yeah. I was born and bred in this country, like many other black kids of my generation, and I do see my future in this country, yeah. And what kind of future do you think it's going to be? What, what type of jobs, what...? Do you mean in general or personally? Well, for you, personally. For me, I'd like to see myself do very well in the modelling business. I'm a model by profession. I'd like to move into dancing, acting, etc., and, and make, you know, make make a good life out of that. Their identification with white society can also be seen in the fashions they follow. Clean cut, um, quite well dressed, 
you have to have quite a good job to you know, keep up with the fashions. You know? You're wearing a very interesting outfit tonight. How much did it cost? It didn't cost me anything because this used to be my mother's when she was the same age as what I am now. So it's what age is it? What what period oh. is it? Nineteen. 1950. Is that the in look now? Well, at the moment, 1950s and 40s fashions are back in fashion, yes. Are they very expensive? Generally? Well, to buy a dress like this, I'd say I'd pay about £80 for it. And you wouldn't get it made like this anyway. But, I mean, I do wear jeans and T-shirts. I don't go out posing all the time. I don't go like this dress to work. It's when I go out in the evenings. I am quite normal. I don't wear makeup to work, I wear jeans, I wear flat shoes, I wear a polo neck jumper. As far as work's concerned, <clears throat> soul music and fashion has got nothing to do with when I go to work. I go to work not to look good. The identification with whites can also be seen in things like hairstyles. Winston Isaacs runs a successful London hairdresser's which caters for many blacks who are into soul. Is there much difference between the styles his white customers and his black customers ask for? Very little, uh, because I feel that hairstyles are really merging now and people are basically into fashion, which we are. What sort of customers does he get? I feel that we're attracting a certain Lots of person here, not your actual sort of person in the street. We have a lot of professional people, a lot of people in showbiz, um, people who are sort of moving into a different economic sector. But on the whole, would you say your customers were, were Rasta? No, we don't cater to that sort of crowd. Um, the people that come here want to get nice, nice hairdos, nice high fashion type hairdos, things that are very current. And, they just want to look very nice. I mean, let's face it, a lot of people, unfortunately, just think of Rastas as having the dreadlocks thing with lots and lots of wax or whatever it's called. But, um, you know, I suppose you have to be the type to wear that sort of look. So the soul scene is racially integrated. Black soul followers aren't interested in a separate black identity. And the music doesn't have the obvious political message of reggae. Do you think the music has a particular message in it? No. A black message? In soul? No, there isn't a message at all. Well, what, what, why do you like it? Because it's sort of uh, joyful and happy. Does it do anything for you and your blackness? Does it help you to relate to yourself? No, it just helps you to get out of society for a while and enjoy yourself, you know. But even having fun can have a serious message. To some people, soul contains a message as important as the message of reggae. Some of the music's got message, like, uh, for instance, that we are family, I mean, you know, that record, you know, says a lot for, you know, I mean, it's a lot of, you know, everybody's together, happiness, you know. Soul followers, then, have very different attitudes from the reggae followers. They deliberately identify with this society and underplay their blackness. Of course, not all black kids divide neatly into one camp or the other. Many of them like both musical forms, and there is an overlap between them. But those who do identify clearly with one subculture tend to take a fairly critical view of the other. Don't you feel people who are into, say, soul feel the same pressures as...? They feel the same pressures, but they react differently. They're more for one get into the system and help the system and help the system. But reggae, but reggae is that thing that shows you, say, you know, the system is against you, so you have to fight against it. And if you have to fight against it, you can't get into it. Well, I can't take soul. Soul is not me. What do you mean? Soul have nothing for me. Love. You dance, but I don't feel nothing. If I don't feel nothing, I can't move. What about soul people who are into soul? Do you feel that they're not as black as, as you? Well, 
Some of them black, but they black outside, but inside not black. Reggae, you feel black all over, inside and out. They're conforming. They're conforming to a different world. They want to go into a different world where they're going to face, they might face a, a, a few fruitful joys, but they'll always face hardship. Yeah, they like, call you different names. They've got names for us, like they've got wolves in sheep's clothing, you know, and uh, bald head and things like that, you know. <laughs> we ain't got a name for them. I mean, we don't have to have a name because, I mean, like, you know, we're cool, you know. Why do you feel like they're so hostile towards you? I suppose they think we're the traitors or something like that, you know, which we're not. I mean, they're the ones who, you know, they're the people who are, I mean, dealing us out, you know. What do you think reggae people are doing for black people as a whole? What reggae people are doing? In terms of getting on in this country. I just think they're showing up their ignorance even more. That's how I feel. Do you feel that... Do you not feel that they're helping race relations? Do you... No, I don't. Well, they keep themselves to themselves, themselves. don't they? Like I said, they don't, they don't like mix. white people, do they? I would, if I go into a reggae club, I'd be frightened. I'm frightened of the people in there. It's just a matter of personal taste. I find it a bit extreme. What do you find extreme? Um, the message in the music. What? What is it? Well, the message is um, you belong in your country, West Indies, Jamaica, Africa, or whatever. Uh, and I fulfil that. It's wasted. I think uh, the soul man is the front, you know, the front man for the, uh, you know, for the, for the black people. You know, I mean, uh, you know, better appearance. You know, they're, you know, they're together more, you know, than the reggae people. And do you think that togetherness is the expense of that? Is losing their culture? No, I mean, like we're just living like you know any other normal, you know. English people, you know. I mean, we're people too. I mean, like, we're not, you know, we, <laughs> we're not anything, you know. We're people, just the same as anybody else, you know. I mean, we've got the right to live the same life as anybody else, you know. I mean, it's up to, as I say, it's up to the individual, you know, up to you. Be yourself. Be what you want to be, you know. <laughs>